Hey everybody, today let's talk about the Parrot Bebop Pro Thermal. Most people tend to write Parrot off as a toy drone manufacturer, but they've been really trying to change that opinion. With the recent release of the Parrot Anafi, a lot of people have been taking a second look at Parrot. And also, it seems like a lot of people lately have been asking about thermal imagery and thermography. So I thought I'd take a minute and put the two together and talk a little bit about the Parrot Bebop Pro Thermal Aircraft, which certainly isn't the most sophisticated system out there, but at $1,500 does present a low cost entry into the thermal landscape. So let's go ahead and crack this thing open, see what's inside and find out what kind of value you get for that $1,500. Now I will say the backpack feels fairly high quality, but I imagine you're more concerned about what's inside. And this is the Parrot Bebop Pro Thermal Aircraft. Inside this case comes with the aircraft, the controller, three batteries, two battery chargers, some extra props, and the FLIR 1 Pro Thermal Camera, which is, of course, the star of the show. So the controller itself is a little plasticky. Uh, to be honest, it feels a little cheap. And man, let me tell you, that antenna is big. I guess it does a good job, but it looks kind of ridiculous. But you know, after flying with it for a little bit, it's not that bad. You kind of get used to the controls and even though it does have a slightly plasticky feel in the joysticks, it does the job. So in this little goodie bag here, you have an assortment of things. Interestingly enough, Parrot decided to put in a host of different charging ports so that if you travel, you're all set since they can just clip into the charging packs. Uh, that's a nice little touch if you travel frequently. I do most of my flying in the United States, so yeah, I don't know, probably won't be a big deal for me, but it's a nice touch. You also get a charging cable, a cleaning cloth, and a nice little case for the FLIR 1 camera in case you want to take it off and use it separately, which by the way, you can do. You can hook this FLIR 1 camera up to your phone using the FLIR 1 app and use it as a standalone thermal camera. Now that's a neat little touch. You may or may not ever use it, but it's nice to be able to. Here you got your charging brick. Like I said, it comes with two of those. You can use one for the controller and one for the battery or charge multiple batteries at a time if you want to. Now, Parrot says that those batteries will give you 25 minutes of flight time. I found, like normal, it was closer to about 22, but they do throw in three batteries. So that's gonna give you upwards of an hour of flight time without having to recharge all of your systems. Now, trying to pull it out of the case, these propellers do feel a little bit flimsy and I was worried that I might break one as I'm pulling them out. If you make sure they're lined up properly when you pull them up, they do come out, but it does take a little bit of work. Of course, there on the back, you can see the FLIR camera and you know, this thing is light. It's really light. I'm talking like 1.3 pounds light and it does kind of lend itself to like a cheap feeling, plasticky feeling. Makes me nervous about putting a thermal camera on it, but you know, it seems fairly well built and I think they cut some weight out by putting foam in the front area and using a plastic undercarriage, but this seems like a fairly simply built drone. Now being so light does have its advantages, but it also creates some issues, especially when you're dealing with wind. I'll show you some examples of that later. But for now, you can see here the camera can click into three different angles depending on the mission. And Parrot seems to be gearing this aircraft towards visual and thermal inspections, fire monitoring, and search and rescue, which are of course three of the largest use cases for thermal drones right now. But we'll come back to the aircraft in a second. Let's take a look at the case and see what else is in here. Here you can see the tablet holder that connects to the controller. You can turn it sideways to accommodate a phone as well. But the thing to remember is you must have Android. The free flight thermal app is not yet available for iOS, which was difficult for me because pretty much everything I have is iPads. And you end up having to sideload the app onto a three-year-old Kindle Fire just to get the thing to work. Not optimal, but we made it happen. The good news is it gave me an excuse to buy an Android tablet. Should be here soon. And in these boxes, you can see the prop removal tool and some additional battery charging cables. Like I said, it's a nice touch. Nobody cares about cables, so let's take a look and see what else we got in here. They were kind enough to throw in a few spare props, it looks like. And like I said earlier, these props are pretty flimsy. I mean, you can see that they got a nice little bend to them. 
Now, it does make the aircraft lighter, but I can't help but worry about durability and performance in high winds. With such a light aircraft and absolutely no collision avoidance on board, you have to be extra careful when you're flying this aircraft to make sure that there's no mishaps. It shouldn't be hard for most people since it does have a pretty robust GPS mode, but it does require a little bit of extra thought. And like most other aircraft in here, you're gonna get your instruction manual as well as a nice little goodie bag that you can put all your props and extra equipment in. And like I said earlier, the tablet mount is separate from the controller itself and you have to take it off and put it back on every time you wanna use the aircraft. You can't stow it in the backpack with it connected, which was a little bit of a nuisance, but what are you gonna do? So here on the side is a USB, here on the bottom is the charging port and you can see once you have it on there it's fairly stable and it's spring loaded to extend nicely and should accommodate just about any android tablet you might have out there and even with it in place you should still have access to the controllers themselves the power button the home button and the settings button everything you're going to need will be there underneath the tablet now the one complaint i had with this is that once it's in place you don't get a whole lot of wiggle room in the way that you can adjust the screen. Pretty much you get straight up and down with a little bit of play, but not a huge amount of adjustability. I guess that's not super big deal for a lot of people, but for some people who like a little bit more control of that, it could be frustrating. So let's throw a battery in the aircraft. You can see it connects there with a nice little click. And unlike DJI that has the pinch to remove, this has a small lever in the back that you can see there behind the camera. It makes it fairly easy to remove. The batteries for this aircraft are 3,350 milliamp hours. And like I said before, Parrot says you'll get about 25 minutes of flight time. I noticed closer to 22, but it was a little bit of a windy day, so that could have played a factor. You can see here on the back of the FLIR camera, there's two plugs, one being to keep the onboard battery powered, and the one on the bottom there is for data out to the aircraft so that it can broadcast back to you. Now this aircraft has three cameras, two on the FLIR and one on the front that we'll talk about here in a little bit, but first let's get it powered up. It's 14 megapixel 1080p shooter on the front, saves all its images to its 32 gigs of onboard storage. Now this front camera does have three axis image stabilization, but it is digital and not from a gimbal. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the performance later. And on the FLIR 1 Pro unit itself, you have a 160 by 120 thermal imager, as well as a 1440 by 1080 standard daylight imager. Now you can overlay those two to one image, which is pretty neat. And on the bottom, you can see here a small fan to help keep everything cool as well as an altimeter imager and more plastic. Lots of plastic. Anyways, let's take a look at the performance of the imager itself since I know that's what you probably all care about and that's why you're here. Now, remember as we're looking at this, the resolution for this imager is 160 by 120, which is on the low end when you compare it to systems like the X-T or the X-T2 that are looking at 640 by 512 for the thermal resolution. So for high-end industrial applications and thermography, those are gonna be the go-to sensors. But when you look at the low cost here, the value that you get is surprisingly high. So let's spin up the FreeFlight Pro Thermal app and go through all of our calibration checks and see what we got here. So you can hear that aside from the aircraft being pretty loud, it's also quite windy outside. So we'll be able to see what that image stabilization system can do. Now this video is straight out of the 14 megapixel 1080 shooter on the front. And even though the wind was blowing about 10 to 15 miles per hour, the digital image stabilization did a fairly good job of keeping everything in place. Now, you can tell there is a slight difference between what you would see here and maybe with a gimbal stabilized aircraft, but overall, pretty darn good for what you're paying for there. But of course, nobody is buying this aircraft for the standard front camera. So let's jump in and take a little bit of a look at the thermal imager. There's a simple button you push to turn the aircraft around, and this is what you get. You can see here it gives you a minimum and a maximum temperature there at the top and the color gradient associated with it. And you can see that jittering in the thermal imager, 
That's due to the fact that this is not a gimbal stabilized camera. So whatever the aircraft is doing, that's what your thermal camera is going to do. And that can cause a problem for people who live in areas like me that are generally pretty windy, but it may not be a deal breaker for everyone. And honestly, even for me, it was a little bouncy, but it was still usable in most cases. Now, the system has three different selections, standard, hotspot, and dynamic. Now, for me, on this day, it was so hot outside that standard did almost nothing. For me, dynamic is the representation of choice since it calibrates itself based on the ambient temperature and registers the variance in temperature between different items. Now, hotspot can do something similar, but in my opinion, dynamic gives you the best overall image. But before we take this inside and do some tests, I wanted to show a cool other little thing in the app that when you pause the video on playback, you can actually press anywhere on the screen to find out what temperature it was reading in that location. And that is saved in the data file. So you can go back and check those different things out at a later date after you've recorded the information. It's kind of a neat little tool. And thermal cameras tend to do well when there is a high variance in temperature. So let's take it back inside where you can see my lazy dogs laying on the couch, even though they're not supposed to be. And you can see the minimum temperature here is just below 70 because my wife likes to keep the AC cranked. And here, looking underneath my TV, you can see my Wi-Fi router there on the right and the TV tuner box there on the bottom, which are both retaining a little bit of heat. So that is the Parrot Bebop Pro Thermal. This whole aircraft can be bought for less than most thermal imagers alone. So what do you think? Has Parrot successfully entered the commercial grade market or are they still just a toy drone manufacturer? Let us know in the comments below.